Okay, and welcome back folks, Professor Almeida here. In this video, I want to show you how you can use web-based software such as Tinkercad to create a design for 3D printing. I'm holding a chip clip here in my hand, and I actually use this as a demo in COSA2. I created a chip clip in Tinkercad, had it sent out to a 3D printer, and now I can use this to hold a bag of chips or a bag of snacks. By the way, you can watch a video of this chip clip being created. You'll also learn how to create a chip clip just like this one. Stick around for more in this video. I'm also gonna take you through the Tinkercad project from start to finish. If you need a break, you have that pause button. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. So here we are in the COSA2 class. Go to the 3D printing module. You wanna grab a copy of the handout and the grading rubric. So here's the handout, here's the grading rubric. It is a 40 point project and you wanna make sure that you get all 40 points. So for example, if you turn in your Tinkercad file, you get two points. If you use multiple objects, it's four out of four and so forth, okay? It's all or nothing here, so you wanna make sure that you pay attention to the rubric. All right, let's talk about this project. In this lesson, you will learn how to use web-based software to create designs for 3D printing. You will use critical thinking when learning about and creating a 3D printed design that is useful, functional, and appropriate for the challenges of 3D printers. But before we can get started, we need to become familiar with some basics and limitations, okay? And we do that by going to tinkercad.com. You can create a free account at Tinkercad and once you get set up this is your dashboard you can see that I created a little box here but before we can go crazy with our designs we need to learn how to use Tinkercad so you can click on learn there are a couple of featured starters here but I want you to focus on the lessons and if we see all lessons there are six in particular here that I want you to go through, okay? Starting with learning the moves, camera controls, creating holes, scale copy and paste, key ring letters, and then finally die on the work plane. As a matter of fact, you'll see the list of six lessons here in the handout. And as you complete the lessons, you wanna make sure that you understand how to design your prototype in light of 3D printing limitations. You might need to do a little research on 3D printing and there's a bulleted list of things you need to consider. As a matter of fact, when we get to the chip clip demo, we actually address what's in the bulleted list, starting with size. You know, what units are we working with here? And you'll see that we're actually working with millimeters. Okay, for your design, you don't want uh, something bigger than let's say 100 millimeters, and you also need to be realistic about what you can print. In the past, I've had students print chip clips, business card holders, phone holders, but again, you need to be realistic about the size, pencil boxes, and in one case, I had someone create a gaming console case. It was a portable gaming console, and they created a case with uh, different parts. Okay, we'll get to that momentarily. You need to think about offsets, the work plane itself. Remember, you are in a 3D printed space. Support, or lack thereof. You should assume that there are no support structures, and this really cuts down on what you can realistically come up with. Okay, let's say, for example, you saw a 3D printed human skull uh, that's on display, okay? Remember, there are no support structures and you really have to think about if it can be printed, okay? I'm gonna use this as an example. Let's say this is in your work plane, but it looks like this. Will this print out? Okay, let's think about it. It's gonna go layer by layer, but when it gets to here, it's nothing but air, right? There's no support and that heated, melted plastic is just gonna plop right down onto your work plane. It's gonna be a, a blob, right? So how do we fix that? Well, we might actually have to rotate the design. Will it print now? Well, let's think about it. Again, layer by layer, but now we have support here. So you might actually have to rotate your objects, okay? Let's talk about alignment, grouping, and ungrouping, okay? You can see here, 
to have the teeth and the hole here aligned in the middle. And if you think about it, this is really a box, a cylinder, okay? You have more boxes here. This is uh, where the hole was created. And then you have another cylinder here. So we had to align and then group them together so that they can move as one. But perhaps, you know, there's an issue with the alignment. So you'll have to learn how to ungroup as well, okay? So make sure that you know how to align your objects and then group and ungroup them as appropriate. 3D versus 2D, okay? I have a five millimeter thickness here. If this was completely flat, it would just be 2D. It wouldn't be real 3D. So make sure it's actually 3D and then having multiple parts in one print job. So you can see that I have multiple objects here, but multiple parts, you know, let's think about that uh, gaming console case. Okay, if you have everything spread out over your work plane, you need to think about how long it's going to take uh, for the 3D printer to do its job. Now, this one here, this chip clip, actually took 40 minutes. Okay, so you need to think about size again. If it's, if it's a large object, it's going to take some time. And if everything is spread around uh, all over your work plane, obviously it's going to take a long time to do that. Finally, naming your file and then exporting your file. You'll see all of that in the demo. All right, we are ready to get started here. So let me go back to the dashboard. And this would be a good point to take that break. Okay, so if you need the break, take it. I'll be right here. And when we come back, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the chip clip. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started with that chip clip design. I'm going to create a new design. And you'll see once the work plane is loaded, you have this random name here, Tremendous Dupe. I'm going to go ahead and change it, 3D Chip Clip Demo. Of course, you could come up with something else, right? So I'm calling it 3D Chip Clip Demo. Here's the work plane. Here are the camera controls. Uh, I have buttons to zoom in and out. I have this old school trackball, so it's kind of hard for me to just scroll in and out. So I'm going to use these buttons here. Let's begin. I'm going to take this box, drag it onto the work plane. And it's going to be 60 millimeters by 20. You can also type the values in. Remember, let's be realistic about this. And let's say no more than 100 millimeters in any given direction. Uh, an example of a failed design was a bicycle part. Okay, uh, Someone actually tried to print a bicycle part, not realizing that it was in millimeters. So you want to be, again, realistic about what you are actually designing. Okay, we're going to keep it small and simple. And if you keep it small and simple, you will do well on this project. All right, so we have it 60 by 20, and then we'll set the thickness here down to five millimeters. Okay, you can see where I'm moving this, right? You could also type this in, by the way. So let me just type in five. There you go, five millimeters. Now, let's grab a cylinder. And the cylinder is already 20 by 20, okay? So we're good. I'm going to position the cylinder. I'm not going to reduce its thickness just yet because I wanna see how it looks. And you might have to actually tinker around with this, okay? So let's go ahead and align these two objects. You can see that I'm dragging to select both objects here. I'm gonna use the align tool. Okay, and then we can actually click on this. Okay, and it should be perfectly centered. All right, let me rotate around again to see how it looks. Let me click off of the objects here. And again, you might have to move things around. Okay, let me drag the cylinder in just a little bit more. Okay, so you might find yourself having to do this. And once again, you know, don't worry about this here as long as you align. Okay, and it looks like it says it's centered. Okay, if it's grayed out, that means it's pretty much centered. Uh, you know what? Let me drag it out one more time. So again, I'm just doing this for the sake of demonstration. You know, you can move this around as much as needed. And then once again, we align one more time, boom. And let's say we're happy with it, okay? Now I'm going to adjust the thickness, okay? Once I'm satisfied here, I'm gonna adjust the thickness. Again, I'm just gonna type in five millimeters. At this point, I'm ready to group this together. So again, I drag to select both, and then we're gonna group. 
Okay, so again, I'm doing this for the sake of demonstration. You might uh, need to make a couple of adjustments here and there. So I'm going to just leave it like this. I'm pretty happy with it. Now let's create the teeth. Okay, so I'm going to drag another box into the work plane. And I'm going to rotate this box at a 45 degree angle. So you want to be careful with the, the tools here. You want to make sure you're on the, you're on the correct plane. Right, you want to make sure you're on the correct plane. So 45 degrees, okay. And if you mess up, you can always undo. I'm gonna set this to 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters, okay. And what we're doing here, what we're doing here is we're actually creating this, okay. This is what we're creating right here, okay. So once I'm all set, I'm gonna go ahead and copy or use Control C. And then we're going to paste or use control V. So check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know what? Just do one more. Eleven. It's not going to matter because we're going to group all of this. And then we're going to uh, set it on top of our object. And again, notice how I didn't pay attention to thickness this time because we're going to actually create a hole here. And this might take some fine tuning. Okay, so I can zoom in as appropriate. And you know what, let me move this down just a bit about right there. Okay, click on top. And again, we're not worried about where it is right now because we're going to actually align these two objects together. All right, so let's line it up. Boom. And I'm going to click on the teeth again. We're going to turn this into a hole. And now let's group to see how it looks. Okay. And you know what? This looks good. I'm pretty happy. So if you need to make adjustments, you can always go back and ungroup, right? You can go back and ungroup, turn it back to a solid, you know, move it around, realign as necessary. But, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. So let's leave it like this. All right, let's finish this project. I'm going to grab a cylinder. I'm going to set this to five by five, five millimeters, five millimeters. Again, I'm not worried about the thickness because this is going to be a hole, okay? Just in case we want to hang this on a keychain or something. All right, once again, we're going to drag to select everything and we're going to use the alignment tool. Okay, we want to make sure this is perfectly centered and it is. Uh, take a look around. You know, I'm pretty happy here. And we're going to group. Whoops. Actually, there was one more thing I was supposed to do. So again, if you make a mistake, control Z is your friend. Okay. So click on the cylinder. Let's create that hole. And now let's group. There we go. And that's basically it, folks. We're, we're pretty much done here. And if you're happy with your design, let's go ahead and export this out. Okay, so we're going to click on export. And if you need that break, okay, let me give you a couple of moments to catch up here. If you need that break, take that break, and I'll show you how to export this out and turn in your assignment. Okay, how are we doing, folks? Let's go ahead and export our design. Again, we're just going to assume that we're happy with it. I'm just uh, doing this for the sake of demonstration. So let's go ahead and uh, export this out. I'm going to choose Export, and we want an STL file. Okay, what it's going to do is it's going to download a copy of the STL file, and at this point, we are done here. Now, I can return back to the dashboard, and you'll see our 3D chip clip demo is in the dashboard. We can click on Tinker This if we want to go back and fix things. But at this point, we're pretty much done. Okay, at least I'm done with this. All right, let me show you how to turn this in uh, as an assignment in Canvas. Okay, folks, before we can turn this assignment in, there's a couple other things I want to go through in the handout. All right, so let's take a look at the handout here and uh, let's go to page two. So we've created our chip clip. Here is the project. You will submit two files in Canvas, a short report and your exported 3D design. 
So step six, in a Microsoft Word document, please address the following in a short write-up. Identify at least three realistic needs or wants you have that could be satisfied with the use of 3D printing. Now, the chip clip was one example, okay? Maybe you wanna create a pencil box or a card holder, okay? So, you know, hint, hint. But you have to justify those things in a write-up, okay? Think about the function and form in deciding on what those needs are. This is where you discuss and describe the problems you might be solving. So for example, with the chip clip, you wanna make sure that it's small enough, that it doesn't take too long, it's sized appropriately for a bag of chips. You wanna make sure that your teeth can securely hold your chip bag in place. Okay, so those are some of the things you need to think about. If your 3D printer has its workspace out in the open, what about the air currents? What about temperature? Okay, uh, think about those limitations. You want to check your report for spelling and grammar. Okay, I have to grade you on your writing. So you want to use the built-in tools with Microsoft Word. If you're using another word processing program, you need to know how to export to a Word document. Again, Google is your friend here. All right, item number seven. Okay, we just did item number seven, if you really think about it. Choose one of your items or your need as your 3D design, okay? Explain and justify your chosen need. Describe in detail your proposed solution in your write-up. So you start your 3D design in Tinkercad, assemble your shapes, and then save and export your project as an STL file. Remember, keep this simple, okay? I've seen folks uh, make really complicated designs and then they end up losing points on the project because there was an issue with alignment or maybe the objects weren't grouped properly or there was an issue with gravity, okay? So try to keep it simple, have fun with this. Let me show you how to turn this in, okay? So in your modules, you'll see the Tinkercad project. And this is your reminder here to address items six and seven. We're gonna click on start assignment and we'll scroll down, we'll click on choose file. And I'm gonna go into my shared documents here. And uh, here's my write-up. And then I'll add another file. And then here's the chip clip demo. Okay, let's pretend we're turning those things in. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Submit Assignment. And now it's turned in. If I made a mistake, you know, I can always go back into Tinkercad. I can export again and then click on New Attempt to resubmit. Anyway, that is the Tinkercad project. I hope uh, you have fun with this and uh, let me know how it goes. All right. Take care, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.